There is weakness, then. Angron's grip slackens. His arm dissolves. The Lord of the Red Sands is thrown back as the Angel rises. In Sanguinius's hands is a pistol, and the dregs of Angron's sentience recognize this as the melter weapon in Furnace, a one-use thing of incineration. The Angel casts it aside and takes wing, diving right at the demon, leading with his sword. Metal grinds, sparks spray, arcing out from the meeting blades. Sanguinius impales him. The two brothers are face to face, one of them a visage of bloodied human perfection, the other a construct of absolute inhumanity, rage made manifest. Die, I free you from this torment. The demon is not dying. Sanguinius tears the blade free and leaps upward, taking to the sky. Bleeding, laughing, the demon follows. The Lord of the Red Sands beats his wings harder. They race low to the ground, hardly an arm's reach above the heads of their warring sons, fast enough that their armies are an indistinct blur. Angron swings the Black Blade. He gouges earth. He sends blood angels and world eaters tumbling across the ground, their bodies destroyed, their souls spilling into the warp's million waiting moors. Without warning, Sanguinius climbs, soars. Sanguinius weaves aside from the blinding slashes of las cannon beams, rolls away from the juddering passage of a legion stormbird. Angron, far less maneuverable, crashes into it, goes through it, tastes the flavor of those doomed souls as their craft comes apart around them. The billowing smoke cannot hide the light of the angel's soul. Angron is close. The demon gives a draconic roar. Angron's mouth is still open. When the spear, hurled from the angel's left hand, strikes, Angron falls. Angron hits the Royal Ascension with cratering force at the heart of the two warriors.